the Kitetsu Swords, a series of superior blades crafted by a school of skilled swordsmiths hailing from the kingdom of Wano, each labelled a cursed blade, and being of legendary status, both due to its extreme power, as well as the tragic fate that is said to befall on its wielder. While both the Nidai and Sandai Kitetsu are currently accounted for, the first of these renowned blades remains elusive. Said to be of the highest calibre out of all three, we have wondered for many years, where does the Shodai Kitetsu lie today? Or rather, with whom? Could it be that the Shodai Kitetsu is in the hands of Saint Ethan Baron V. Nasu Juro? And if it is, how did he come to wield one of these Meito? What would this then say about his heritage? And what will this mean for battles to come? Hello my Nakamatachi, this is Joy Girl, and I know that the biggest mystery that has come out of chapter 1117 is what the rest of Vegapunk's message might have been. Mo... Mo what? Mo the fu- Oda's trolled us again. And maybe we'll get to figuring that out another time, but today I'm stuck on another mystery. A mystery which in some ways may go back even further than the curious history of the D-Clan. The mystery of the Kitetsu Swords. In chapter 97, we were introduced to the Kitetsu Swords, a series of three blades all being considered Meito, the original being of the Supreme Grade, the Nidai being of Great Grade, and the third, and as far as we know, the final of the Kitetsu series, the Sandai Kitetsu being of the skillful great rank. And while these blades are considered powerful and worthy of reverence, they're also known to be cursed blades that result in the death of their wielders. Swordsmen, even famous and supposedly skilled swordsmen, are said to have died using the Kitetsu blades. That is, of course, until the Sandai Kitetsu met its match in Roronoa Zoro, the world's next strongest swordsman, whose luck was able to overcome the Sandai Kitetsu's curse. And the rest, as they say is history. Except, wait, no. The whole point of this video is to figure out that history. Okay. So after being first introduced to this legend of the Cursed Blades all the way back in the Logetown arc, it wouldn't be until almost 20 years later that we would finally see the Nidai Kitetsu, the forerunner of Zoro's Sandai Kitetsu at Wano. And it was in this Wano arc that we learned more about these swords. A great revelation being that the Sandai Kitetsu, which is currently in Zoro's possession, having been crafted by Kozuki Sukiyaki, the former shogun of Wano, father to Kozuki Odin, and the grandfather of current shogun Kozuki Momonosuke. Sukiyaki used to go by the alias Tenguyama Hitetsu, this name being not too dissimilar to his ancestor Kotetsu, who was the famed legendary swordsmith who crafted the Nidai Kitetsu. And if we follow that pattern here, I'm gonna guess that Kotetsu was the descendant of another legendary swordsmith, who was the one that forged the original original Shodai Kitetsu. But where is this legendary Shodai Kitetsu now? Who owns or possesses it? And who was this legendary swordsmith who created the original Kitetsu, giving birth to a legendary series of powerful but ill-fated blades? Starting with that question of who currently possesses the Shodai Kitetsu, as of chapter 1117, it does seem that it could be in the hands of the Gorosei member, Saint Ethan Baron in V. Nazujuro. Fans have long speculated that Nazujuro does indeed possess the Shodai Kitetsu and that this elder is somehow affiliated to Wano Kuni, pointing out his attire as being distinctly Japanese in contrast to the rest of the Gorosei who were dressed in suits upon their first introduction, as well as being the only one introduced with a sword, a sword that had a suba, suba meaning handguard, that closely resembled the rounded suba of the Sandai Kitetsu and the later revealed. Nidai Kitetsu. This speculation about Nasujuro coming from Wano or somehow being related to Wano only deepened upon the revelation of this Gandhi looking Gorosei's name in chapter 1086. His name being Saint Ethan Baron V. Nasujuro, the god of finance. And few could dispute that his name, or particularly the ending of his name, Juro, sounded awfully similar to Zoro's alias in Wano, Zoro 
Juro. Juro deriving from a popular traditional naming convention used in Japan where children are named in reference to their place in their family. In this case, Juro meaning 10th son because Ju means 10, Ro meaning son. And so one would assume that Nazu Juro would be the 10th son of a Wano family yet to be revealed. But upon closer inspection, the Gorosei's name actually inspires much more conjecture. Because when written in Japanese, the Gorosei's first name, the name that sounds Japanese, Nazu Juro, looks like this. And interestingly, Nazu is written in katakana. In other words, Nazu is an English word or letters that has been phonetically transliterated into Japanese and doesn't inherently mean anything in the Japanese language. Which makes sense considering Nasu is actually an extension of V Nasu, the transliteration of the planet Venus, which Mr. Nazujuro represents due to the planetary theme of the Gorosei, with each elder star representing a planet, in this case Nazujuro representing Venus, whereas Juro is written in kanji. But here's where things get interesting. In English, this ending Juro seems to be the same ending given to Zoro's alias in Wano, and even the way it's spelt in Japanese. That last character, Ro, meaning son, is spelt in the same way for both names. But the character used in Zoro's name for Ju, that character meaning Ten, is not the same spelling used for Nazu Juro's name. When it comes to Nazu Juro, the Ju character actually seems to be Shu. Shu or Sho meaning longevity, congratulations, long life, etc. And then even more interestingly, when those two characters, Shu and Ro are put together, those two characters form another word, Toshiro. It seems to mean good fortune, or maybe a man with good fortune, a young man or son with good fortune. And I know I just did go off on a little bit of a tangent here and I hope you're following, but I have found this delve into Japanese names and spellings very insightful because I was initially speculating that Mr. V. Nasujuro would be the 10th son of a noble Wano family, but it seems that that theory is wrong if my limited understanding of Japanese is correct. And instead, it seems like based on the spelling of his name in Japanese, Nasujuro is actually part of a pun or a hint or however you want to see it because if Shu means long life and Toshiro means good fortune or a son with good fortune or a man with good fortune, it seems fitting to be the name of one of the Gorosei. The Gorosei having been established now to be beings with exceptionally long or perhaps even immortal lifespans. So Nazujuro being a play on that idea of having a long lifespan and perhaps good fortune. Or in other words, good luck, which is also very important when it comes to the Kitetsu swords because as we remember, it was Zoro's good luck that allowed him to overcome the Sondai Kitetsu. And if you're willing to humor me and entertain my interest in these Japanese names a little further. I do also think it's very interesting that Nazujuro's surname, Ethan Baron, seems very Western. In juxtaposition to the Japanese sounding Nazujuro, Ethan Baron sounds distinctly European. Ethan is a popular male name, originally of Hebrew origin, appearing in the Bible many times, but has since been adopted in English-speaking countries, and fun fact was actually the fourth most popular popular name given to boys in 2013 in Australia, which happens to be where I'm based, whereas Baron is a title or a rank traditionally used in European countries, denoting honour and nobility for European aristocrats. Not to mention V, often being used again in English-speaking countries based on the Roman numeral V, meaning five, to symbolise usually the fifth generation of something, together implying that Ethan Baron, V, Nazujuro represents the fifth generation of a noble family of barons, perhaps this lineage all descending from a man named Ethan. So then why the blend of European with Japanese? Even his attire seems to be this blend of European with Japanese, wearing Windsor glasses whilst also donning the Keikogi, a traditional Japanese martial arts uniform. And this all led me to wonder more about the elders' backstory. And if you like where I'm going so far, then please do like and subscribe 
subscribe because I've got more of where this is coming from. So Nazujuro, is he of mixed heritage? Could it have something to do with Wano's closed border policies? Because we know that at least two of the great noble houses of Wano, the Kuzuki and the Amatsuki families, have been around since the void century. And while it's always been taken for granted that Wano was an ally to the ancient kingdom, what with the Kuzuki and Mink alliance, Wano hiding Pluton for centuries, the Kuzuki family creating the Poneglyphs, and Wano having long-awaited Joy Boy's return. Maybe there's actually something much more at play when it comes to Wano's allegiance. A lot more politics and drama that resulted in some of the Amatsuki family leaving Wano, while the Kuzuki family closed its borders, and another of Wano's families joining hands with the enemy, perhaps? For example, what if one of the great noble houses of Wano defected during the Void Century? What if Saint Nazujuro is the product of an alliance between a defector from Wano and a leader of the Twenty Kingdoms? Could this have then partly influenced Wano's closed border policies, being a method to ensure that no more of its citizens would join hands with the Twenty Kingdoms? Perhaps mirroring the real-life Japanese policy of illegalizing marriages between Japanese and non-Japanese nationals until the late 1800s? What if Nazujuro's parents, or at least one of his parents, and I'm going to assume his mother here, given his family name is the Western-styled Ethan Baron. But then again, it wouldn't be the first time a character in One Piece has taken on his mother's family name. So maybe I'll just go back to saying one of his parents. What if one of Nazujuro's parents was the former Shogun of Wano? Is it even possible that Wano was actually one of the 20 kingdoms? But once the Shogun joined the rest of the world's powers, the rest of Wano's citizens teamed up with Joy Boy in the ancient kingdom instead. Or what should we make out from the fact that the Kazuki bloodline are somehow related to Kotetsu. Hitetsu revealed himself to be a descendant of Kotetsu. Does this simply mean that Kotetsu was just his first name? Meaning that his full name was Kazuki Kotetsu and the original creator of the Shodai Kotetsu would then be Kazuki Kotetsu? In which case, did Nazujuro or his forefathers steal the prized and legendary Shodai Kotetsu from the former Shogun of Wano? And is that what initially created the curse of the Kitetsu Blades. We know that Blades seem to actually have almost a soul of its own, especially those legendary Meito Blades. Maybe the Shodai Kitetsu burned with rage at what happened, having been stolen from its creator, used as a treacherous weapon against its own enemies, thereby creating this legendary curse. A curse that would pass down for centuries and generations, despite swords being created by different swordsmiths, each being imbued with this tragic loss of history as the Shodai Kitetsu was never returned to its homeland Wano. Okay, sorry, I am now just wildly speculating here. But I do think that there is a real chance that Nazujuro's backstory will be closely linked to some very lore-filled history involving Wano. But before I get too ahead of myself, I should point out that it's not yet confirmed that Nazujuro indeed possesses the Shodai Kitetsu. Much of this speculating has actually resulted from a short and quite frankly, an unclear piece of dialogue from chapter 1117, when during a brief clash of swords between Zoro and Nazujuro, we see the surprised exclamation, Kitetsu? And while I initially read this to mean that that was a line of Zoro's dialogue, upon closer reading and much deliberation on the internet, it has been pointed out to me that this dialogue might have actually come from Saint Nazujuro instead. Or perhaps both Zoro and Nazujuro being surprised at each other's possession of their respective Kitetsu blades, because that dialogue bubble does seem like it could have two speakers. Fans have also pointed out that the appearance of Nazujuro's sword has been inconsistent, and in some chapters, like in chapter 1117, his sword doesn't resemble the Kitetsu blade at all. For example, in this panel against Zoro, you can't see that trademark rounded cross pate Tsuba. And personally, I would just take this to be a minor mistake, something that may or may not be corrected with the official volume release, but I guess you never know. Maybe Nazujuro doesn't have the Shodai Kitetsu. But I do think that's inconsequential, because either way, I think Oda would only 
include this dialogue here if Nazujuro has a more vested interest or relationship to the Kitetsu swords, such as owning one himself. And there are, of course, other clues that have indicated Nazujuro's connection to Wano or to the swords himself. For example, back in chapter 97, it was said that no swordsman in the world uses a Kitetsu, and if he did, he wouldn't be around long. And at the time, it just seemed like ominous words to enhance this sense of danger surrounding the Sandai Kitetsu, serving as a warning to Zoro against tempting fate. But I don't know, is there more to this line? Because the shopkeeper seems like he was right all along. Both the Sandai and Nidai Kitetsu back then were not being used, because even Hitetsu or slash Sukiyaki himself was too afraid to use the Nidai Kitetsu. So then what if there's a half-truth that applied to the Shodai Kitetsu as well? As per the shopkeeper's words from Logetown, that Shodai Kitetsu isn't being used by a swordsman, because as it now seems, the Gorosei aren't simply men. They're not ordinary humans, because whether by devil fruit or via other means, they can turn into mystical, overpowering creatures. Creatures that don't seem to age and are not susceptible to injury or damage. The Shodai Kitetsu may be in use alright, but it sure isn't being used by any sword's man. It's being used by someone not apt to be called a man or a human. And there are of course other clues that have also indicated Nazujuro's connection to Wano. For example, in chapter 1052, it is Nazujuro and not any of the other Gorosei that confirms that Zunisha's departure from Wano means that the country's borders has not yet opened. How did Nazujuro know this when none of the other Gorosei knew this? Was this Oda trying to hint that Nazujuro has deeper knowledge of Wano Kingdom's history and lore and that's why he's more aware of the mystical relationships associated with Wano Kuni? Maybe this can also explain some other mysteries that still baffles us surrounding Wano or its people. For example, why was Kozaburo a wanted man in the eyes of the Marines? Is it possible that he was only wanted because Nazujuro recognized the Shimotsuki name, being linked to Wano himself, and understood the dangerous potential of such a great noble house, a family that birthed the great swordsman Ryuma, and then therefore put a target on Shimotsuki Kozaburo's back. And then so if Nazujuro does truly possess the Shodai Kitetsu, it does seem like the perfect time to reveal this legendary blade given that we are now in Endgame, which would also open us up to lots of questions about the future clashes in One Piece. This brief clash of metal sticks between the Elder Star and Zoro is a moment that we've been waiting for ever since we found out that Nazujuro may be a swordsman, a moment that is almost 25 years in the making. And now it raises questions of, will Zoro end up with the Shodai Kitetsu? Will he defeat Nazujuro despite wielding an inferior sword, again proving his prowess as a swordsman, taking him one step closer to becoming the world's strongest swordsman, all the while revealing plenty more delicious lore about how Nazujuro came to possess the Shodai Kitetsu in the first place. Lore surrounding Wano and its great families, Joy Boy and the Ancient Kingdom, and of course the tumultuous events of the much-awaited void century. Well, all of that is only my speculation, but I have to admit that I am a little sick and my head is not all that clear right now, so what do I know? Instead, tell me what you know, or tell me what you think, because I'd love to hear it, so leave it as a comment below. Don't forget to like and share this video, please do subscribe, and you can also show your support by becoming a Patreon or channel member. On that note, thank you to all of our current patrons and channel members. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.